I'm not gonna do the whole thing, get copyright, like the first 10 seconds of the video. What is happening everybody? What are we doing today? Yo, we are getting our Clapton on, and I've got five different Clapton licks here that uh, to me are deceptively challenging. Like you might hear them and you're like, oh, they're just basic pentatonic licks. And and maybe on the surface you look at them and you're like, yeah, okay, they're pentatonic licks. But then you like, you learn them and you're like, oh, oh, the timing's hard here. This, this isn't as easy as I thought. And I by no means have a good like Clapton vibrato, but uh, you know, I'm just gonna roll with <laughs> roll with what I got and these are just five of my favorite Clapton licks that I ever learned Now if you would like tabs for this lesson, those are linked down below uh, You know when it comes to blues players, I, I'm not I'm not a blues player But um, you know the three main blues guys in my playing are definitely SRV uh, Angus Young and then Clapton of course, so uh, let's go ahead and dive on into these <laughs> So lick number one. Now, for my tones, if you're interested in those at all, I really like the tone I was getting out of this uh, this guitar. It's my 335 into my Rev Dynamis on the on the Dirty Channel, kind of giving me that uh, to me a very Clapton-y tone. Probably too much reverb, but uh, it definitely had that remnants of Clapton to me uh, whenever I was dialing it in. Now, uh, the first lick here is essentially just a basic pentatonic lick. What I thought was cool was uh, Clapton's use of string skipping. I believe I got this lick from cocaine. Uh, I believe that's where this lick is coming from. It's kind of like halfway through the solo. He goes, and it, I was like, ah, oh, that's cool, because he skips a note that is in a typical blues lick. That, that right there, you know, he does that a lot. Don't get me wrong, Clapton does that lick all the time. But uh, this one he did slightly different, and it caught my attention because of the interval jump. So... So he's bending four on the uh, G. So we're just out of box one of our E minor pentatonic skill. So he's bending four on the G. Then you go uh, to 12 on the high G. Right there, and already I was like, that's cool. You know, uh, if you're not used to string skipping, that could be a little bit of a challenge because you have to basically hop over that B. Okay. Now, I believe he's picking this, not pulling off. A lot of times he does a pull off, but if you listen, there's more of an attack on the notes. So I think he's picking it. And then you're gonna go 15 to 12 on the B. Okay, so you have. Now, this part here was, to me, one of the cha most challenging parts of it. Because it's such a fast bend, and then you need to play the note. You don't hear the note come down, you just hear it bend up, and then an unbent. Okay, so we bend 14 up on the G, a full step. Then you play it unbent. Yeah, it's full step. 14, and then you go to 12, and then you go to 14 again and you bend it. And you could resolve it if you wanted to. Uh, you don't always need to resolve the root notes. Clapton didn't always kind of bring it back to the root. Uh, there's your phrase. You know, whatever. But there's just so many cool things that you can do with this idea. I just love the attitude of it, and uh, it's very like in your face. But like I said, it was it was challenging when I dove into it. I was like, oh, that feel there is hard to get. Oh, see, I'm messing it. There you have it. So there's the first one. And the next one to me is one of Clapton's coolest licks. Um, I, I kind of I broke it up, so I had some stuff from the Blues Breakers, some stuff from Cream, and then some stuff from Clapton solo, as of course. But uh, so this is from uh, Crossroad. <laughs> Anyways, the, the little ending, I didn't do the first part of the lick, you know, to me the, the lick has two halves, it goes of, then he goes into the, the little ending lick right there, boom. So what, are we, what am I doing exactly now? It's really cool because he's bouncing between major and minor, a total Clapton thing to do. 
uh, you'll see that he adds a lot of the major third into his minor pentatonic. And it also adds a major seven, so he adds a lot of major notes into his uh, minor pentatonic. <laughs> So, um, you know, and, that's, and that's totally where, I, as far as adding that minor seven, that's where I got it from. I do it a lot. Um, he's going like this. So we're going to go five, it's all A minor, five hammer on six on the G. So that's minor third to major third. Okay? Now here he goes into like a standard bluesy kind of thing. Which, again, is odd for me because you got to roll your finger out of that. And then you go five on the B and five on the G. Okay? And then you go eight, pull off to five on the B. So, so just practicing that is already like a, a decent little chunk. Okay? Now I'm going to go to seven on the G. Back to five on the B. Okay? So... Now this part here is five on the G and the B, and you're gonna hammer on to that six. Okay? So again, we're incorporating that minor third to major third kind of feel again. That note there, that's just your fifth. So, so we have. And there's a little bit of a pause here. He, he goes, you know, he has, has some coffee or something like that, and then ends, because he's resolving to that five chord. And this little look here is to me one of the coolest ones. I do it all the time whenever I'm essentially, you know, kind of like outlining a chord a little bit. Because you can do it anywhere. Oh. And uh, he's going like this. He goes 7 on the D is where he kind of ends. Then he goes 5 hammer on 6 on the G again. Major, uh, minor to major. 5 on the B string. Then 7 on that A string. That's basically resolving it perfectly to your 5 chord out of the key of A would be your E. But I do this, like I said, all the time to go to the 4 chord. Maybe go to your root. Uh, just figure out where your root is. And, and it works all over the place. It's a, it's a really, really useful lick and it's a little bit tricky. Alright, now this next lick, I am trying, I cannot think of the Cream song that I got this from for the life of me. I'm going so brain dead right now. Yep. But, uh, I just remember when I heard it, it was, <clears throat> it was faster than a normal Clapton lick. And, uh, I was like, what did he, what did he just do that? What, what did, do, what did you, woof? And then I was like, oh, it was really cool. So, and then, uh, he of course goes on to, to some other crazy Clapton thing. But um, that little first part, the way he like just rode up to that root note, I was like, oh, that was that was pretty sweet, man. And you know what? I had to learn it. And uh, I thought it was really, really cool. And essentially, it's just this. It's all based out of our pentatonic. Again, he's incorporating that major third in there, but it gives you a, a almost like chromatic, like a walk up. Okay. So it's all based out of that box one of your A minor again. And I'm gonna go seven pull a five on the G. Then I go to uh, seven on the D. So. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, on the G, you're gonna go five, hammer on six, hammer on seven. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not quite chromatic. You could, cause that'd be your flat five. But basically you're going like this. Okay, then he goes to five and then hammers on to eight on the B. So five on the high string. That'd actually be really cool if you kind of held that eight, got that clash. Now it sounds like a Phil X lick. So Phil X meets Clapton. Although I believe he hates blues, so maybe, maybe don't do that combo. So that, to me, that was like a really cool one because it's really fast. Um, but you can utilize it in a lot of different, you know, concepts where I'm like, okay. You know, move it to box two, move it to box three. Just that little... 
kind of sound of it. Of... I'm just moving it throughout the scale, you know, and, and I, I basically, uh, I'm just adding an in-between note. Now this next one was a really cool one that he did, uh, and I believe this was after midnight. We don't let it all hang out. And uh, I heard it and I was like, oh, that's totally what I'm gonna use. That's a cool lick. So, um, you know, uh, he has an, an infinity of uh, cool licks. But basically the lick was this, I liked it because the way he rolled his finger and he stopped and then he like threw in this other little fast part. I was like, oh, okay, I, I got you Clapton, I got you. So he, uh, basically it's this. Cool way to go through that lick. Then. Sorry, I, I don't have the Clapton vibrato. I can't do it. I have, I have the Angus Young uh, vibrato, but. So basically what's happening here is he's walking down a good old C minor pentatonic. So he goes 8 on the high string, and then he goes to 11 to 8 on the B. He might be going to pull off there, I, I end up picking it. But what happens is instead of going like you, you know, traditionally do with this style of lick, you know, a lot of times you go like this, you go to that note right there, that 10. But he goes to eight again, so he has to roll his index finger up. And I'm, I'm already like using this like on. Now here he, he kind of comes back to it and he sticks more traditional pentatonic. So he's gonna go uh, 10 on the D, and then uh, what is this, eight to 10 on the G. Then eight on the high, or uh, sorry, eight on the B. Getting ahead of myself. Then it goes to 10 to 8 on the G. Then on the D string, it ends right here. It goes 10, 8, 10. Resolving it to that root. So. Sorry. And that was, that was definitely one of my best. I didn't know that one before this video. Uh, all the other ones I've, I've kind of known and used for a long time, but, um, that was a new one, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, that that that's a new one <laughs> that I'm gonna use all the time." That little that little move there, that it that first like four notes is is worth it all right there. That little. Now the next one is actually a little bit of a riff uh, from Clapton, and this is uh, something taken from you know Blues Breaker days, is stepping out. And uh, there are a lot of different versions of this song. You can, you know, listen to whatever one you want. They're all a little bit different. They're a little bit faster, slower. He bends, kind of pulls off different areas. Uh, he tweaks it, you know? I mean, he's just, he's having fun with it, improvising it. Uh, so I kind of went with the more standard one that was on the blues, on the Beano album. <laughs> couple things I want to talk about about it but overall it's just it's such a fun riff to play it's got plenty of attitude it's got that Clapton swagger to it so we're gonna go it's all G minor pentatonic so you're gonna go uh, five on the D then you go to three on the G back to five three again a little half step bend there bending it up to your major third like he's always doing it then you go five to three on the G. Then you're gonna bend five up. Now this is what I'm talking about. He kind of is a different. Sometimes he does like there's like a half step. Sometimes he does a full step. So okay, you bend it. And then you release it. Then you go to three. So. Then you go 5-3 again on the D, so... And then that, this little part here, he goes to the D string and it's 5-3-5-5. Five, five, five. And this is the part I want to talk about, because this is pretty tricky right here. I could only play it correctly one way. Uh, there's another way you can play it, but I believe he's doing it like this. But the picking is what I had to kind of figure out, because 
doing outside picking made it really tough for me. So I had to do inside picking. So what I'm talking about there is uh, my picking is inside of the strings. So I'm going up, down, up. So up, down, up, down. Not going down, up, down, up. So the way my hand kind of falls on this. Okay? So when I end, I have to do inside. If I did outside for some reason, I couldn't get the, the feel of it right. So that could be something to mess around with if it gives you trouble. And I actually watched a couple videos on this riff because I thought he was going like this. And to me, it still works. It's open uh, on the D to three, then open three, so which makes it significantly easier. <laughs> but I think maybe he was going. All the videos I saw were doing this. So. Either one is gonna work. Um, I couldn't tell. Sometimes you can like noticeably tell a difference between an open fret and then a fretted one. So uh, maybe I just need to listen more. But it, either one will work. It's the, the notes are correct. But I think this is maybe the way Clapton did. It. So there you have it, home diggity dogs. That is some Clapton for you. Um, I'm actually working on an entire Clapton solo, which you will be um, hopefully seeing a lesson on soon. I got a get it all worked out and all that stuff because that one will definitely probably get hit for copyright and just got to figure that all out. So until next time, guys, make sure you get the tabs. I will be seeing you all on the flippity flop later. Peace out, homies. Keep on rocking. And get your clapping on, yo. <laughs>